Hey, what's going on, everybody? So my name is Shavi Zane, for those of you who don't know. Um, so I started off playing this song right here because this particular song has been in my head today, and I haven't heard it in over a year. So for this song to come on, it automatically put me in the mind of, right now it's time to focus on me. And so when I was thinking about the message that needs to be brought to those of you who are drawn to my channel, um, the focus right now should be on you. You want to put strong emphasis on self right now. Is that selfish? I wouldn't say so. Because you might find that for a very long, for a long time, maybe even too long, you've been putting your focus in on others. And it has left you feeling slightly depleted. Um, maybe you wasn't getting the reciprocity that you needed from others, but you was found yourself pouring and pouring and pouring, but not filling up your own cup. So this message tonight is specifically for those of you who find yourself in a, you know, in a space where you might be kind of low vibrational or where you're needing to pick yourself back up or where for those of which, for those of you who might even have blockages in certain areas of your life and you can't quite figure out how to get past certain milestones where you feel like certain doors have been shut and you want to get an idea of what is causing the blockages. So this particular message, my desire is to look into the cards, pick up on the energy of where these blockages are coming from and what can be done to remove these blockages. And I would also like for us as a collective body, um, for those of you who are awakened, uh, to do this in unison, meaning when you get ready to write, burn, and release, because you all know I'm big on writing, burning, and releasing, and also lighting candles. Um, I would like for us to come together as a collective to do it on behalf of not just ourselves, but the collective body, okay? So I know this is about focusing in on self, but I feel like it'll be much more powerful if we include others that support us while they are also including us. So it's like we're all working to assist one another so generally when i do a writing burning and release it'll start off with um i destroy and i release all blockages and then we have a list okay but this time i would like to say on behalf of myself and all who support me in love i destroy and i release xyz 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 so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go through Using the cards, we're going to check and see what's the current energy, um, what these blockages might look like for the collective, for those of you who are joining at this time, and ways that we can clear it out together, okay? So this is us pouring back into ourselves or getting that reciprocity that you might not have gotten from those people that's in your intimate circle, but we are creating our own space here on this channel, okay? Um, I noticed that many of you tend to support one another, and so... Um, you know, I just want to do this as a collective body. And if you're in, just, you know, put it in the, in the comments below, say I'm in so that we can know who we're supporting and who's also supporting us when we do this particular, um, ritual to destroy and release and also to create on a candle. So let's just see first card coming out. Look at this is the tower. And right at the bottom of the deck, we have the eight of swords. So there's definitely this energy of being stuck in your head or some sort of tower moment that has happened that you find yourself really thinking hard about, okay? So something might have come down in your life unexpectedly. Um, it could have been a breakdown of a relationship, an old job, you know, a job that you might have lost, um, maybe financial issues, health issues, whatever the case may be. Whatever this tower is, you might be really overthinking and feeling stuck. So the whole purpose of this message is to help you to get unstuck, okay? So let me just see if I can get an understanding of what this tower is. So for some of you, it deals with others, okay? People outside of yourself, third-party situations, three of pentacles is in reverse. Something about no longer working with someone else, no longer co collaborating with someone else. Like I said, for some of you, you might have lost a job. For others of you, it could have been like a family unit where it might have been, you know, father, mother, child, or whatever your family unit looked like. 
um, that is no longer in alignment or balanced, okay? You might not be working well together. Something came down about, you know, that situation came down because I just don't feel like something was working out there. The magician is in the reverse. So this is manipulation, okay? Um, this is manipulation. I mean, it could be energetic manipulation that's coming from an outside source. But let me see. Why is the magician in the reverse? Because... I never like that card in the reverse, okay? It could indicate like spell work that's being done towards you to cause these tower moments in your life. Look at that, seven of swords. So the magician is in the reverse because there may be someone around you who is being very deceptive, okay? Um, definitely manipulating a situation and doing spell work against you um, to create tower moments in your life and to keep you stuck mentally Um or feeling like you can't move, feeling as if you're trapped in this situation, creating an illusion though, because you can see in this card that it is an illusion um, based on her reality. She's not really trapped, but when she looks at the situation from a narrow perspective, she definitely feels like she's trapped or surrounded by a lower vibrational energy that she can't get herself out of. And so this tower moment was largely due to manipulation. Um, for many of you, energetic manipulation, so it is going to be very important to um, do a writing, burning, and releasing. I destroy, on behalf of myself and those who support me, I destroy and I release all dark magic, all spell work, all energetic manipulation, all evil eye, um, and all blockages that are sent towards myself and those who support me in spirit and in flesh, and you burn it, okay? That's one of them that has come forward. So whichever one you feel guided to do specifically, you know, you don't have to say it, but just whichever one you feel guided to do, um, the more that we work together on this, the more that we can actually help to, off, you know, lift this energy off of others as well. You know, as a collective body, it's much more powerful when we do it that way. Um, some of you might be taking financial losses as a result of this, but it's definitely this energy of being stuck. Um... And there is definitely an outside source that is contributing to these situations that are occurring in your life right now. The will of fortune is here. So I definitely feel that this cycle is getting ready to close out, you know, in spite of what's going on. It was destined for this situation to come down. Even, even if you say, okay, well, there's outside influence, there's some sort of energetic manipulation or someone that's doing spell work or whatever the case may be. It's not that it wasn't meant for you to actually move into a new cycle at this point in your life because you are, okay? So these things were destined to happen. This tower was destined to come down in spite of others having their hand in it. They're going to receive their own karma. But this is actually taking you towards a much better place because if you look at these two cars, this woman here that's on this wheel, she's free. You know, she's happy. She's light in her energy. Whereas this person here, whether you're male or female, this person here is stuck, mentally trapped and feeling as if they're not free. Um, you know, buying into the illusion. But here, you stand tall and strong. You're smiling. You're happy. And a new cycle is beginning. Destiny. This is actually catapulting you towards your destiny, okay? So now... Two of Swords is here. Some of you might be at a crossroads trying to make a decision. Trying to make a decision to figure out which direction you should go in. Maybe it's because there's this energy of not being able to fully see what's happening around you. You don't really understand why these changes are taking place, okay? And so in this energy of feeling stuck or mentally trapped about what's happening on the surface... Um, it's leaving you in this energy of being at a crossroads, just really feeling like, well, I don't know which direction to go. Um, maybe even not wanting to face the reality of what's happening around you. <clears throat> there are a lot of black birds here that's hovering over this, um, excuse me. <clears throat> Somebody wants to also block your throat chakras, keep you from communicating openly because the source does deal with communication, but when you're not able to see things clearly, then sometimes you can end up, you know, maybe miscommunicating your truth or not knowing what to say at all because there's an understanding that it's like you're lacking an understanding concerning what's happening in your situation. And so um, these dark, these blackbirds definitely indicate that there is 
some energy that's hovering because someone is actually bringing that energy to you. Okay, you see it's in this person's bag. They carry this and they're out to create some sort of deception, some sort of illusion, and they're doing it behind, you know, in the dark. Okay, um, and so this is where you want to do what's necessary to not look at your situation from the surface. You want to rise above it and see it from a higher perspective using your spiritual eyes. That way, you're not confused. That way, you can make a clear-cut decision that is not based on illusions or based on someone else's energetic manipulation of the situation, okay? You want to see it from its full, you know, from the real reality which is the spiritual nature first, as above, so below. So what's created in the spiritual realm is a, there's a mirror reflection of it in the physical. So you want to see it from the spiritual perspective. Um, so you have the queen of pentacles here with the ace, I mean, with the page of uh, wands at the bottom of the deck, I definitely feel like Many of you, this new cycle that you're moving into is going to take you out of lack. So if, you if you've if you taken a lot of financial losses lately, this cycle that um, you're headed towards is taking you out of lack. Maybe you have a new spark, a new creative idea, something that you're very excited about. Maybe you're um, excitedly um, moving towards someone where the two of you will be able to create abundance together or someone is coming towards you. Whatever this is, is good news. And um, it definitely provides security. You feel very stable, protected. It feels like a very solid foundation that's being created here. And so it's something to be excited about, okay? Um, so if you're currently in the energy where like, let's just say the tower just happened. You just went through a storm. Changes just happened in your life and you just like, oh, it just has you down or you just feel mentally stuck about it. Just know that this is only a snapshot moment of your life and that you're getting ready. These things are happening because there's really good things that you're getting ready to move towards. So being intentional about clearing that energy out of your mind and your spiritual space is, um, is very important. So I feel like this Queen of Swords in the reverse this is definitely someone who's um, disappointed in a situation. They may not be very happy right now. Ace of Pentacles in the reverse because they feel that they have missed out on an opportunity. Now, I am picking up in terms of like this deceptive energy. It's a lot of source that's coming out here. So you could very well have someone in your life who is a uh, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius who might be doing this energetic manipulation against you to keep you confused so that you don't make a decision to move ahead um, and to jump off of this karmic cycle that you've been on. They want you to miss this opportunity because they feel like they've missed an opportunity with you. Like I said, whether this is a partnership, a friendship, whether this is a business um, partnership, whatever the case may be, this person is angry and they're very guarded. Their heart chakra is blocked. And so I feel like this is them being sneaky, you know, seven of swords, another swords card to create energetic manipulation or maybe to do some spell work against you so that you stay in this energy of being at a crossroads so that you cannot see your way forward when it's time for you to jump off of that past karmic cycle and move to a new direction, move towards your destiny, because this is the card of destiny. Okay. And so, um, either way, I see you moving forward, six of swords. I do see you in this energy of maybe carrying some of that mental, like that overthinking energy with you as you move forward, but it is taking you towards calmer waters. It is taking you towards more level ground, okay? So you might have come out of like a very turbulent space emotionally where the waves was really high, but as you continue to move forward away from the past, it's going to definitely allow you to smooth your emotions out. So let me see. I'm going to pick one more from here and I'm going to move on to my other deck. Of course, if you all want a private reading, you can always email me. Um, if you want to order my body oils or my hair oils, email me. And also, if you'd like to donate to my channel, um, check the uh, description box.
So many of you have new love or a new opportunity that's coming towards you that's going to be very emotionally fulfilling. This could also be you practicing self-love, okay? Nurturing yourself, knowing your own self-value. So your heart chakra, you know, doing the work to mend your heart chakra and to be more open so that you can attract to you all of those things that you have been praying for. Um, yeah, you are having, a lot of you are having new love that's coming towards you, okay? So with this Two of Cups and this Ace of Cups, I feel like there's an energy with the tower coming down. Some of you have ended a relationship that was not built on a solid foundation. And this person that you're walking away from may have been doing some spell work against you or doing something um, energetically to manipulate so that you would stay at a crossroads in terms of whether or not you should walk away from them and move towards this new opportunity. Okay, I'm getting a lot of cups energy coming out now. So it could be someone who is... Um, water sign energy or they could just be in that water energy okay they can either be a cancer pisces scorpio or they could just be functioning from a space of love where they're just emotionally available and open and they know how they feel about you you know how you feel about them so it could be this energy of okay i have this new exciting opportunity to move towards something that's more stable that's more solid to move towards someone who is grounded who practices self-love, who knows their own value and who has created their own security and, and a foundation for themselves that's immovable. And so you're moving away from an energy that was very toxic in nature, okay? And someone who you could not work well with, okay? You might've had children with this person, but the fact of the matter is it just wasn't working out. And for this person, it is a missed opportunity. I feel like you were a gift to them, um, and they had an opportunity to work with you, but there was some sort of opposition um, that they had. And so now they're seeing you move into a new direction. They recognize that you're pulling away from them. I feel like you've been pulling away from them emotionally. Maybe some of you are limiting your communication with these people. Like I said, it doesn't have to just be love, but I'm picking up a strong energy of love here. So that could be for the majority of you. But, um, you know, everyone is different. So just take the message how it resonates. And if it doesn't resonate with you at all, then just come back for a message that does, okay? So I am picking up, um, you're moving into a really good direction and that, that there is an energy that does not want to see that happen, okay? So if you've been trying to figure out, okay, well, why does my energy feel low? Why am I, you know, feeling like you know, I'm in a stuck energy or like I'm at a crossroads and I just don't know what to do. It's because of that. So that's why you definitely want to do the writing, burning and releasing to clear out all spell work, dark magic, energetic manipulation, blockages, illusions that are being created for you. All of that, write it down and burn it in spirit and in flesh. You write that at the end and you burn it. Um, one more card here. Yeah, the moon is in a reverse. So it's going to be revealed to you. The truth is being shown to you so that you can come out of this energy. If you've been having sleepless nights or you've been overthinking and you've been stressed out and you just have this, this really dark energy that's been hovering around you, like the same theme is coming out in many of these cards, okay? Um, the, the color red is also showing up strongly here. So I feel like the root chakra has been... Um, the, the energetic manipulation or the spell work was directly targeted towards your root chakra. So if you felt this energy of fear or lack of security or um, really feeling as if you had to be overly focused in on your security for whatever reason, lack mentality, like I said, fear, these things is what the uh, spell work was doing, okay? It was directly targeted towards that specific energy or to help to uh, create that energy. And so I feel like the lesson in all of this is that you still needed to do work on your root chakra. You still needed to do work to heal your root chakra so that whoever tries to manipulate from the outside, it's going to, the energy that they're sending to you will not touch you. It's going to ricochet off of you because your auric field is so, is so light, okay? And it's going to go back to them just naturally because you've done the work to heal your root chakra or any other chakra for that matter. But I feel like this was definitely someone who knew you personally because by them knowing your own your own vices or your own fears, by them knowing these things about you, they was able to use that against you to manipulate you energetically. 
to keep you stuck and bound to them in spite of the fact that the tower had already come down on this situation. For some of you, this has happened, it's currently happening, or it's going to happen in the future. So I would just say um, work on your root chakra, getting out into nature, drinking green smoothies, listening to um, certain frequencies for the root chakra, wearing the color red, meditating on the color red, um, writing, burning, and releasing anything that's related to fear. I destroy and I release all fears, known and unknown, in spirit and in flesh. Burn that. Then you can go and light you a candle that's red and get you a permanent marker and write on the glass of that candle and say, um, I am courageous. I am infinitely abundant. Everything that I need is readily available to me when I need it. I am courageous. I am powerful. I am strong. I have a solid foundation that is immovable in spirit and in flesh and let that candle burn. Call on your spiritual team when you're burning things and call on your spiritual team when you're writing to create things, like when you're writing on your candle or if you're just writing things out in general. Make sure that you're communicating with your spiritual team so that they can be intentional about helping you, okay? And always show gratitude and give thanks to the Most High God for giving you the authority and the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding about what was happening in the dark because this moon is here in the reverse, which shows you that which, what was hidden from you, which you could not see clearly because you was blindfolded to it, um, this deceptive energy that was around you, you couldn't see it clearly because this person was creating illusions in the dark, okay? And they was hiding their hand. So now this moon, they can't hide anymore, okay? Everything that they was doing behind your back is now coming to light. And this could be you just having a revelation about it. They may not come out and tell you what they was doing. More than likely they won't. But the most high God in your spiritual team has a way of alerting you of certain things, okay? And so um, you could have been seeing synchronistic numbers that was coming out a lot. Um, me personally, the number 1111 has been very strong in my energy lately. So I'm very well aware that there is a new beginning that is happening for myself. But I feel like for the collective who have been doing the work, there's a new beginning that's happening for you all too. And this definitely deals with a lot of you just new opportunities, financial opportunities, new creative ideas that you're getting ready to embark on. And of course, new love that's coming in that's going to be very powerful, a strong soulmate energy that is coming towards you. So this is where you want to come out of that energy of being stuck in the past. Um, yeah, because as long as you're stuck in the past, you won't take the leap of faith because a part of you is still going to be getting pulled into the opposite direction, you know, to turn back around from something that you've already been shown that you need to clear out. So let me see, you have here emotional loss. So there is, look at this, and right at the bottom of the deck, I have um, leave the past behind, okay? So there is this energy of maybe feeling like, okay, it, it hurts to walk away from the past. That could be what you're going through. We have a lot of cards where it's like this mental anguish of being stuck in your head or losing sleep or overthinking. It could be it's like, okay, this tower has come down and now you're facing the reality of having to really continue to move ahead and to not look back. But I feel like it it may be the it hurts more because because um you recognize that turning back to this person is going to bring a certain energy that you've outgrown and you know it's going to bring certain blockages in your life that you just don't want to have to deal with. You don't want to create that. You don't want to get back on a karmic cycle of negative situations or lessons having to be learned to take in losses and all of these things over again. You don't want to take that. You don't want to go through those lessons again, okay? You've already gone through that chapter of your life. And you want to move forward. And so it could be that emotionally you're going through some changes because you know you have to leave this person behind. It could also be that you're picking up on the energy of this person that you're walking away from. Because right now I feel like they're very focused in on the negative aspect of things, okay? Still sitting in a very dark energy. And they're, wa they're watching you walk away. They can feel you energetically pulling away. And so I feel like... Um, it's almost like they're willing to do anything to keep you from embarking on this new path. And so, like I said, for some of them, that includes doing spell work. Okay, you have here, nothing is yet set in stone. So I feel like this just means that <sighs> things have not been solidified. Um, maybe there is this, this energy of you still holding on to the past for whatever reason. And so you want to 
do what's necessary to cut, you know, cut the lines of communication or to cut this person energetically out of your life so that you can receive what is destined to, for you to receive, okay, in this, in this season. So spiritual strength is at the bottom of the deck. It's showing me that you're going to need to do the spiritual work. So like I said, writing, burning, and releasing, saying your affirmations, lighting your candle, working with your spiritual team. This is going to help you to close out this cycle with the number nine here because that shows a, a completion of cycles, okay? And so it's not set in stone yet largely because some of you might not be able to see it from a spiritual perspective just yet. Maybe that moon has not been, you know, um, that the, what was hidden in the dark has not been revealed to you yet. So you haven't exactly done the work because you don't really see where the blockages are coming from. You don't really see where this negative energy is coming from. But maybe in this message, this will bring you the clarity that you need. Maybe your intuition was already telling you, okay, this is what's happening. And so you might have needed to hear this message to say, okay, now I can be more proactive in clearing this energy out um, because now I have an understanding of the direction of where it's coming from. So you have abundance right behind this, which shows me, yeah, you're going to be successful, okay? You're going to move towards abundance. Your harvest is plentiful. And I feel like certain people had to be cut out of your life in this season because they're not supposed to go with you when you receive this harvest, okay? Um, we've done quite a few messages in regards to the karmics. And so, yeah, throat chakra is here. Um, something about communication, opening up your throat chakra so that you can speak openly, Um And to speak your truth, that's very important right now. The number five is coming out quite often. So if you've been seeing 555 five, five, or if you just notice a lot of changes that have been happening in your life, it's because these are destined changes right now. And so speaking your truth doesn't just consist of you communicating with those people that are in your um, life, but it also consists of the messages that you are communicating out into the universe. What are, what are you communicating through your thoughts, through your emotions, through the words that you speak? What are you communicating, okay? What is the dominant energy that you're projecting out there? So you want to definitely be cognizant of that. But it's also showing me that um, there is some communication that is needed at this time, whether it is you communicating with the person that you desire to have in your life and taking action towards them, or you communicating your truth to the person that you know you need to leave behind, people, you know, or places, things, whatever it is that you know you need to leave behind and coming into um, seeing it clearly, okay? Facing the truth about that and speaking openly about it so that you're not suppressing it and so that you can re um, create the closure that you need or even give someone else the closure that they need so that they can do the work to heal and also move towards their blessings if it's meant for them to receive it in this lifetime. Um I just feel like some of you, many of you have outgrown some of these connections, okay? And so it's just, it's your time to move forward and to receive your the harvest and the things that you have been planting seeds towards. And so I just feel like cutting that cord might be somewhat difficult. And so you want to really turn within so that you can recognize where that is coming from. You have here, clear your mind, okay? So yeah, you had a lot of swords cards coming out from the other deck, which indicates that mentally, just feeling, feeling mentally trapped, overthinking, sleepless nights. Um, you want to be intentional about clearing your mind. So you could write, burn, and release. I destroy and I release all thoughts um, that does not serve my highest good in spirit and in flesh and burn that. Um, and then you can light you a blue candle, which is in alignment with your thoughts, okay, and your communication and um, maybe write on it. My thoughts, the words that I speak, and the energy that I project is in alignment with my destiny and with my divine purpose. You can do something like that. Um, forgiveness is coming out in the reverse, so I do feel like that's definitely necessary in order for you to receive what is um, inherently yours, largely because unforgiveness, unforgiveness creates a... Um, a blocked heart chakra. I'm sorry, y'all. I got somebody that's calling my uh, my phone, and so it's interrupting my message. But unforgiveness creates a blocked heart chakra, and if your heart chakra is blocked, that's the magnetic frequency. That's how you attract things to you when you're projecting the energy of love. And so 
working on forgiveness, write down, I destroy and I release all unforgiveness, known and unknown in spirit and in flesh, and then burn it. Then you get you a green candle, which is in alignment with the heart chakra and right on there. I forgive in spirit and in flesh and let that burn through, okay? So then you have here, think it through. So a lot of thinking, Gemini energy is coming out strong here. I got two Gemini cards that have come out back to back, as well as like the throat chakra energy and all of those swords cards. So it's just showing me that if you're not a Gemini, it's just this energy of going within, really thinking about what you're doing, really analyzing it. Like I said, not just not on the surface, but from a higher perspective. And then you will understand why things are unfolding the way that they are on the surface or externally to you in your physical life, okay? You have here stand your ground, but it's coming out in the reverse. So there is this energy of either just knowing when to fight a battle and when to just step back and just allow the situation to play out naturally, okay? Knowing when is your battle to fight and when it's not, okay? Or knowing when to come out of this energy of being defensive and knowing when to stand your ground. I feel like thinking it through, being very clear about it, okay? Um, because you don't want someone else, this person here, that queen of swords in the reverse is very angry, they're very manipulative, and they'll do anything to win at all costs. Queen doesn't mean that it's a male or female. It can be either one, okay? And so I feel like whoever that person is that you had that tower moment with, they're ready. They're coming in with whatever energy they can to keep you in a low vibrational state. And as long as you're in a low vibrational state, you're angry, you're disappointed, you're bitter, you're in this energy of unforgiveness, then spell work can work. It, spell work can definitely be very effective against you. And so these are things that you want to be clear about, okay? And so this is why you want to stay in a light energy. This is why you want to stay highly vibrational. This is why you want to maintain that direct uh, divine connection to the most high in your spiritual team. And this is why you want to stay internally balanced at all times. So know when to stand your ground and when to just say, you know what, this is not my fight. I'm just going to let you do what you do over there because it's not a fight if you ain't swinging, okay? Okay. So you have your intuition. Listen to your intuition when it comes to these things. Go within, turn within, because there you're going to receive a lot of very clear messages in terms of what this means, why these things are unfolding the way that they are. Her eyes are closed in this picture, so that's showing you that she's not looking at this situation through her natural eyes. Don't look at it through your natural eyes. Look at it through your spiritual eyes, and it'll make it that much easier for you to continue to move ahead in the, way, in the direction that your spiritual team is guiding you to go. It's your destiny to close out that past uh, chapter. And that's why you might find that the longer that you hold on, the more tower moments that keep happening back to back to back to back because they was only meant to be in your life for a season. And like I said, your harvest is ready. It's ready for you. It's that new love, that real love, that soulmate, they're ready for you. But you have to be ready to receive it. And so it's just a, a fair warning for those of you who might feel tempted to go back to the past. Just know that the tower is going to come down again. Um, especially if you know that that person is not doing the work to heal themselves, which I don't see that here. Because anytime you're doing energetic manipulation against a person to keep them stuck and bound to you, then that means that they definitely, they have a lot of work to do and a lot of karmic lessons that they have to play out as a result of the measures that they are using to keep you stuck or to keep you bound and chained to them. It's like, I'm, I'm surprised the devil card didn't come out because that's what I'm picking up on. It's like that um, low vibrational devil energy, okay? Um, so listen to your intuition in regards to that, okay? So I'm going to take one more card from here. Look at this, another Gemini card, okay? Um, this says the answers you need are coming. So again, the clarity that you need is going to come to you, whether you get direct, straightforward communication from um, someone. I feel like most of this information, though, is going to come from your intuition, your inner knowing, okay? It's going to be made very clear to you in terms of what this is all about. So just know that if you're stuck and you're confused, the answers you need are coming. And again, it's also indicating working on your throat chakra because some of you are in a position where you need to 
openly communicate your truth, whether it's like I said, to the person that you're walking away from or to the person that you want to go towards. Because the more that you continue to suppress your truth, suppressing your um, truth is also very low vibrational because it keeps you in this energy of feeling guilt um, or burdened or weighed down. It's like a very heavy energy. So anything that's heavy is going to keep you low vibrational. And so when you're suppressing your truth, then you also become susceptible to energetic manipulation by those people who choose to operate from a space of darkness and doing spell work and dark magic. Like I said, it doesn't mean that they're not going to receive their karma because it's going to hit them strong and hard, especially when you balance out your energy um, because nothing goes out void. And so they're sending it towards you. And right now or for a time in your life, it was actually effective against you because you was in the state of mind that was conducive to receiving that type of energy. But the moment that you balance yourself out and you pick yourself back up and you use the spiritual tools that you are aware of to balance yourself back out and to heal yourself, that's when, okay, they keep on doing it. At that point, they find it's not touching you. So what happens? Again, it's, it goes right back to them. Automatic return to sender, okay? So being aware of this is very important. Um, I'm going to pull from another deck before I close out. I don't want to make this message too long. Um, but for those of you who have stuck it out, shout out to y'all. So these messages here are, um, I made these cards specifically for the chakras, but, um, I also have in here just messages. So whatever message resonates with you, these are also things that you can be intentional about writing, burning, and releasing. This is going to give us some clarity in terms of what these blockages are, whether these blockages was created in your adult life or whether they was created in your, in your childhood just it, as long as you're intentional about clearing them out, some of them was created in your past life and you're like, well, this didn't happen in this lifetime. Sometimes it wasn't this lifetime. It was past life energy that you carried into this lifetime. So right now we have not good or smart enough. So it's something about the root chakra um, where you might not feel like you're good enough or smart enough, whether it's good enough for a position, good enough to become an entrepreneur, good enough to attract or to be with a certain person good enough to, you know, whatever the case may be, something about you needing to work on that. And it started with your root chakra. So not feeling like you're not smart or good enough is also an energy that comes from the sacral chakra as well, because that would create an insecurity. Okay. And so insecurity generally, when you have a blocked sacral chakra, what happens? You end up having codependencies. So that leads me to what's at the bottom of this deck, which says attracts codependent partners. So you may have attracted people to you who are very codependent, whether they are codependent emotionally, whether they are codependent where they have um, addictions like substance abuse, alcohol, drugs, gambling, sex, pornography, um, overeating, shopping, whatever the case may be, cigarettes, then you end up attracting people to you who are codependent in their energy. Like I said, they could be codependent on you emotionally if they don't have any of those other characteristics, okay? And so this energy of not being smart or good enough is the root of where it began. And so as a result of that, it created insecurities and those insecurities created codependent behavior patterns and those codependent behavior patterns caused you to attract people to you who are also codependent in their energy. And so this is why you would end up attracting someone to you that says, no, I can't let you go. You know, if you leave me, then what, what do I have left? They're codependent on you energetically. And so it's like, okay, even though the love is gone, you can't work well together. You're not able to build together. They're so codependent on you that they will do spell work or energetic manipulation against you in order to keep you stuck and chained and bound to them, even in the misery. Misery loves company though. So you want to be very clear about where these where this began and clear it out. So you can write, burn, and release. I destroy and I release all energy or all insecurities um, of not being good enough or not being smart enough. I destroy and I release all codependencies, known and unknown. Um, I destroy and I release, let's see what else. Feel your feelings, okay? It's something about you needing to work on your heart chakra so that you can feel your feelings more. And I did pick up a heart chakra energy here. Um, allowing yourself to feel whether it's loving emotions towards someone else that you've been drawn to because with the two of cups and the ace of cups that's a really strong emotional connection and so 
You have to be in that energy of self-love first in order to attract that type of love. But you also want to be in the energy of being able to be transparent and vulnerable in order to maintain that type of love. And so feeling your feelings and being okay with having that overflow of emotions for someone else and being able to openly express that is very important. And so if you find that, because right behind this, we have throat chakra, performance anxiety. For some of you, your throat chakra is blocked when it comes to being able to communicate your truth, when it comes to your feelings and your passions and the love that you have for someone else. And so you want to work on feeling the feeling and being able to openly communicate what that feeling is to the other person so that no one is in the dark. No one feels like, okay, the reciprocity is not here. I express myself to this person, but they don't say anything back or I don't, I don't receive anything back, even though that other person can feel it very strongly, but they're just silent because they, they're fearful of vulnerability. They are guarding their heart or blocking their heart. And so because of that, generally, if you haven't done the work to heal that area of your life, then you will attract to you situations, people, places, and things that will be very emotionally detached from you. They'll be very emotionally withdrawn, um, lacking compassion, empathy, and all of these things because it's to be a direct reflection of what you are suppressing and what you're withholding from others who may deserve to you know, be loved by you because they're openly expressing it. But because you have your blockages, you're like, you're hiding that aspect of yourself. And so that person, you might end up running off the person that really loves you and a welcoming and attracting to you someone, the same type of energy that you're used to, which is someone who is codependent in nature, but they are, they have a blocked heart chakra as well. And so they're emotionally detached. They're emotionally unavailable and they lack empathy, compassion, and all of those things. Okay. Um, so then you have here, yeah, here's the throat chakra again lacks integrity and honesty when communicating it's something about not being able to speak your truth or when you do communicate the only way that you can get worse you're able to fully open up and communicate is when you might have to curse somebody out when you might have to you know let somebody know what what you know what cheek they can kiss okay or what door they can slam or whatever the case may be you might be very good at verbalizing that. So it might be this energy of, okay, lacking integrity with the way that you communicate. But honesty when communicating, lacking honesty when communicating doesn't mean that you're just going around lying all the time. But it could also mean that you're just not honest about your feelings. You're not honest about your emotions. You're suppressing those things, the deeper parts of you. you know. And so in that case, I'm also picking up an energy of not being your authentic self. So I'm, I'm picking up fear of judgment. I destroy and I release all fear of judgment by others because if you didn't fear judgment by others, then you will openly communicate how you feel. And it will be very easy to flow from you because it's like, well, I'm communicating my truth because this is just naturally what I do. I'm not going to suppress this. Yes, I'm going to tell you that I love you. But the fact of the matter is I love myself enough to know that if it's not reciprocated or... If I don't receive the response that I desire to receive, I'm not going to feel any less than. I'm not going to feel, um, you know, I'm not going to start feeling this energy of I don't love myself. You see what I'm saying? So it's like um, finding your own personal balance and being able to openly communicate your truth is healthy for you because it keeps you in a highly vibrational state. If you love somebody and you're very compassionate about that person and you just feel like that that's your soulmate, openly speak your truth that's an act of self-love when you suppress that energy and you sitting over there going back and forth in your head like oh my gosh i can't tell this person this because if i tell this person this then they might say this or they might not receive it well or they might hurt me then you end up stressed the hell out because you're not being your authentic self and you're having to wear a mask and you're potentially causing yourself to miss out on a great opportunity as a result of your fear of being judged or hurt by others. And so this is where the work needs to be done. Um, I destroy and I release all lack of integrity or honesty when communicating my truth. I destroy and I release all fear of feeling my feelings. I destroy and I release all fear of judgment by others. I destroy and I release all feelings of not being good enough. I destroy and I release all energy of attracting codependent partners. And, um, let me see what else. I'm going to pull another one. The one that I just pulled, it was just, it was for the solar plexus, but it was speaking on different symptoms that you might have. 
with a black solar plexus. So of course, the solar plexus deals with your courage, your confidence, your personal strength. You know, are you able to take that leap of faith forward confidently and courageously without fear? Um, the symptoms of that could be like gas, nausea, you know, um, it was a few different things that I have written on here in terms of the symptoms. So if you're dealing with any of those things, then it could definitely be your um, solar plexus is blocked. Now you have poverty or lack mentality with the root chakra. So it's showing me that lack mentality, sometimes it can deal with you feeling like you don't have enough material wise. It can put you in survival mode, but it can also be lack mentality can also consist of things like not feeling as if there's enough good people out here that's actually going to value your emotions or value the most authentic version of who you are. There's not enough um, good relationships that, you know, or good people out here that can create a solid and healthy relationship. There's not enough love to go around. There's not enough, whatever it is where you feel like there's not enough of, it's a lie and it's an illusion because the our existence is infinite, okay? There is no cutoff. There is an overflow of abundance, but it depends on your perception. You can literally cut off your access to things by believing that there's only a limited amount or you can only get love from that direction. Okay, I was with that person for X amount of years. We had children together and I can only get love from that direction, even though they wasn't showing you love. You might have a skewed perception of what love looks like. You might think that, okay, love only comes in bits and pieces. I might get a little bit of love. They might be able to show it through this uh, measure or that measure, but there's no one out here that can actually be that loving. There's no one out here that can be that giving or, you know, where their cup is overflowing and they love themselves and they love me and it's a unconditional love. That is when you feel like that that type of energy does not exist, then you still have lack mentality. So let's say you meet your soulmate today or you met your soulmate a year ago and that person was just spilling this energy of love. They was able to openly communicate their truth to you. They was able to be loving towards you, kind, compassionate, empathetic, a good listener, and you just felt this strong pull. You knew that you loved them too, but you couldn't express it back to them because in your mind, this is too good to be true. No, 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 It got to be some drama behind this. It has to be. That's because you're still dealing with lack mentality. So that's just an example, okay? So you want to be intentional at destroying our release all poverty and lack mentality in spirit and in flesh. So that's the message that I have for you all. I hope that this has been helpful. Um, like I said, I strongly suggest that we do this together. So if you want to do it in that way, you can write, um, like I said, on behalf of myself and those who support me in love, I destroy and I release. Then you write X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z. So you can take some of the pointers that came through this message, whether you go back and rewind it and write down whatever resonates with you. Um, or, you know, you can also go within. You'll find many of your answers from within. I'm just here to be a vessel to maybe bring some clarity to some of those things that you was already aware of. So I love you all. And again, if you want a private reading from me, just email me. Um, and I look forward to talking to you all next time.